For more on the developments unfolding in Bangladesh as well as in Turkey, I'm joined now by Joshua Walker. He's a transatlantic fellow at the public policy think tank, the German Marshall Fund. Joshua, welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, before we get to Turkey, I'd like to ask you a question about Bangladesh. I find it interesting that just four or five hours after this attack in the capital, Dhaka, already reports of a claim of responsibility. Yet, days after the attack in Istanbul, still nothing. Your thoughts on that? This seems to be a pretty prevalent pattern. Every attack that ISIS has perpetrated in Turkey or has been blamed on ISIS, they haven't taken immediate responsibility. And I think this has to do with the fact that ISIS is right next door. Turkey is the most powerful military force in its neighborhood. An open declaration of war against Turkey would make this kind of ambiguous relationship that's been going on for a while much different. Whereas in Bangladesh, they want to claim responsibility to tie it to the broader kind of global war that they're fighting. So who are the people uh, fighting against secularism and the government in Bangladesh? I mean, I think that this group of individuals, this is, should not come as a surprise. There's been over 23 attacks that ISIS has taken responsibilities for. It's clear that in Bangladesh there is this large uh, kind of extremist faction that is trying to basically take Bangladesh off the path of secularism and move it back more towards Islamic movement of some sort. Do you believe these are the same type of people that have created a climate of intolerance and violence in the country? We've seen bloggers, uh, activists uh, violently murdered in Bangladesh. I do think they're related. And I think the, the question here is when you have an intolerant group of individuals who only have their one way uh, of life, it makes it difficult everywhere. But this is not an isolated problem. It's been particularly bad in Bangladesh, but we're seeing that same problem in Syria, Iraq, all around the world, including in the Western Europe. Okay, let me turn to Istanbul. Um, the alleged plotter has been identified. Ahmad Chetayev apparently directed this horrible attack at the Ataturk airport. He's from North Caucasus region of Russia. So what do you make of the fact that this man has now been identified along with two of the suicide bombers. Yeah, the other two suicide bombers are being reported to be from Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, so all part of the post-Soviet space. And this is actually the most battle-tested and hardened ISIS fighters. These are not local Turks, although there are sympathizers of ISIS, but the ones who actually carry out these horrific attacks. And when you look at this attack in Istanbul, it's classic ISIS. It looks exactly like the Brussels attack. And so clearly there was a long period of planning going on here. And I think what I make of it is the fact that this is a global jihadi movement. This is not a local localized faction. It's not just about Syria, although Syria is spilling over into Turkey. They're coming from all reaches of this world. So we know who the alleged master, I hate to use the word mastermind, and the, the main guy, the architect of the attack. We know two of the suicide bombers, their identities. But how does that help us? The bombers are dead. The Chetayev is on the run. He hasn't been caught. So as far as the investigation goes, where do investigators go from this point forward? Well, I hope that the investigators go from this point forward to try to prevent these type of attacks. Clearly, they were striking at trying to scare people and to not have tourism in Turkey anymore. Turkey's already had a string of attacks that have made it very difficult as a friend of Turkey to watch. And profound sadness hits us when we look at the loss of life. At the same time, investigators need to focus on the future. Where are those pockets of ISIS? Maybe they are sympathizers that they've been keeping track of. It's time to to move in now because if we don't stop them now, we don't know where they'll go next. They could next time go through the Istanbul uh, Atatürk airport to many countries around the world. So I think this is not just a Turkish problem. This is a global problem we'll deal we're dealing with. So what does something like this do to the spirit of Turkey, Joshua? You know, the unfortunate thing is the moment this attack happened, I started reaching out to my friends in Turkey. And actually, I think those of us in the West are taking this much harder than those in Turkey. Of course, it's horrible. But there have been many attacks before this that had much higher loss of life that we didn't report as much as we are now. This hit an airport. Therefore, all of us that love this city and this airport go through this all the time. It struck a little too close to home. So I think there's something different here. Unfortunately, this might be the new normal in Turkey. Yeah, the new normal in Turkey. Joshua, uh, Joshua Walker, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.